Welcome back to Football Mundial, where myself and Zachary here dig out all the most bizarre stories from the wider footballing world. Yes, we do. And this week, we have one of the world's most generous players, another big betrayal in Argentina, and the latest from the Thai cave rescue. Now, let's go. As you know, Croatia set up a semi-final meeting with England on Saturday evening by beating Russia on penalties. But for the people of Slavonsky Brod, the victory was extra sweet. It was indeed. That's because Mario Mandzukic, who grew up in the small town, was so ecstatic after the match that he decided to settle the bill for everyone watching in the local oh, fan park. Massive. What a guy. The bar tab came to 25,000 Croatian kuna, equivalent to around £3,000. And while that isn't the biggest expense for a Serie A footballer, it's certainly the gesture of a generous man. Yes, I could have done with Jesse Lingard covering me on Saturday, to be honest. But uh, who do you think will win tomorrow evening? Is football actually coming home? Oh, yes it is, baby. Let's know up there in the poll. Now, last week, we all heard the terrifying news of the boys' football team who were found trapped 2.5 kilometres inside a flooded cave. Now the rescue mission is well underway. Yes, but it hasn't been plain sailing. No. Last week, former Thai Navy SEAL Sam Angulan died while trying to transport air tanks to the boys. But on the weekend, the first images emerged of the players making it safely out of the cave. As this is being recorded, a total of 10 have made it out and the rest of the team are expected to be rescued today. The operation has had to be swift due to fears of more heavy rainfall, which some have said would have kept the team trapped inside for another four months. Wow, wow. It's a testament to the 100 volunteers who have been involved in the rescue mission, and there is still a lot of work to do, of course, but an absolutely sterling job so far. Big up yourselves. Now it's time to discuss the most controversial transfer of the summer. And no, it's not Ronaldo to Juve or Neymar no. to Real Madrid. No, we're actually taking a trip to Argentina because former Lazio and West Ham forward Mauro Zarate has caused quite the stir by moving to Boca Juniors. He was great on FIFA. The forward mm. contract with Watford expired at the end of last month and he was expected to sign for his boyhood club Vélez Sarsfield for the third time in his career, having been on loan there since January. But at the last minute, and having already posted a picture of himself online in a Vélez shirt, Zarate chose instead to join Boca in the hope that playing for the champions will give him a bigger chance of making the national team. This has come as a big shock to everyone involved at Vélez, and no one more so than Zarate's brother and agent Rolando, who sees Mario's move as a big betrayal. Seems like he is absolutely heartbroken by this. He said, Mauro stuck a knife in my back. He betrayed the whole family and the 40 years of history we have with Vélez. Oh, Zarate is apparently devastated by the reaction to his move, but is it really that surprising? Let us know your thoughts on the situation down below. Yeah. Traitor. Over in Barcelona, a very bizarre transfer rumour is circulating as a result of the Neymar to Real Madrid saga. According to reports in Spain, PSG are so desperate to keep hold of the Brazilian superstar that they have submitted a bid of 270 million euros Oof. for his old friend and Celestial teammate Felipe Coutinho. Apparently Barca have not been contacted directly and instead PSG have lodged the offer with one of the Brazilian's representatives. Now, Bit considering weird. the figure is over double what Barca paid for him in January, it's surely a no-brainer. However, the Blaugrana are understood to not be accepting anything under his 400 million euro release clause. Christ the Lord. Well, that, yeah, it does seem very strange. But what do you think? Is there anything in this or is it a load of old cobblers? Let us know in the poll. And also, old cobblers. We're never, never saying that again. We're never no? saying that again. Great saying. No, never again. And over at the Bernabeu, fans are coming to terms with saying We've got some breaking news, guys. Stop we did press. originally shoot something about Cristiano Ronaldo. However, it's official now. The Portuguese man has joined Juventus for £105 million. Mikey. Wowzers. He's written a letter to the Real Madrid yeah. faithful. What's he said? I've actually got it up right here. I'm still in a bit of shock about this because it's just, it's, it's just hitting me. It's crazy. This has actually happened. Nine years at the Bernabeu. Um, and those nine years in this letter by Ronaldo are described as maybe the happiest 
of his life. That's um, quite an emotional uh, letter. Um, talks about um, hoping that the fans understand his decision, about how he wants to kind of move on with his career. He thinks this is the best thing for him. Also actually talks about the, the high pressure that, that he had at the Bernabeu. Actually kind of says, you know, it wasn't all great. There was a lot of pressure on me and whatnot. But Zach, mm -hmm. What has made Juve such an attractive prospect for Ronaldo? Well, at Real Madrid, the big issue was his contract. He wasn't being paid enough, and Juve are willing to pay him the big bucks. Apparently, he's going to be earning £50 million a year. £200 million over four years, which is how long his contract is, just to be at the Juventus, which wow. I think is pretty impressive. However, we've got one question for you guys at home. Yeah. Who's going to be replacing Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid? Let us know in the comments below. Back to normal football in the hour. We finish off, as always, with our one to watch section. This week, we're looking at Southampton's latest signing, Yannick Vestergaard. Yes, the Danish centre-back is moving to the St. Mary's from Borussia Mönchengladbach for a reported 20 million euros and will be the Saints' third major signing ahead of the new season. Vestergaard travelled to Russia this summer, but didn't make an appearance for his country. However, he will hope to be a dominant figure in Mark Hughes' back line, as he is six foot seven. Ooh, Peter Crouch size. That means he's a full five inches taller than Southampton's next tallest outfield player, Wesley Holt. And it's no surprise he was winning 3.2 aerial duels a match last season. No surprise at all. The former Hamburg man will be a welcome addition on the South Coast. But who should we talk about next week, people? Let us know in the comments with the hashtag one to watch. And make them good because there were only about three last week and none of them really cut the mustard. Sorry to cut say. So we had to come up with one ourselves. So yeah. Cobblers, mustard. Yeah, mate. It's bringing out all the classic old British sayings. It's coming home. Come on. Get into the spirit. So that's the end of Football Mundial for yet another week. Yes. People, make sure you hit us up mm. on your social medias. The links are on screen right now. Mikey, what should they do now though? Uh, they should go and check out World Cup Review from yesterday. Myself and Pat talking about all the quarterfinals, looking ahead to the semi-finals. Uh, go and check out Stat Wars from the weekend as well. Go and check out all our other World Cup greatness over on FD and DFD. Uh, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you later. Look at that one take professional. Yeah.